An embedded hypervisor is very different than an IT hypervisor in the sense that it's very scalable. You can choose if you want to have the three different areas where you want to virtualize, if they want to have them in the system or not. Things like CPU virtualization, memory virtualization, and device virtualization. An embedded hypervisor is scalable, so you can get the right trade-offs between performance and protection. I'm standing here in a lab in William Wind River. We have lots of different embedded systems here. When you think about embedded systems, you think typically small, dedicated devices. And while that's true, they're getting more and more complicated as we speak. Some of the trends that you see in the IT world, like multi-core hypervisors, virtualization, are actually becoming more and more prevalent in embedded systems as well. But there are some differences. While in the IT world, you typically use a hypervisor to be able to run multiple operating systems so that you can have a server farm and consolidate that. One of the key design criteria is backwards compatibility. You want to be able to run your Linux and your uh, Windows, for example, as is. But in the embedded space, multi-core and hypervisors are starting to run on these kind of systems as well. But there's a big difference. You really use them here more for isolation. To isolate, for example, something that used to take two separate boards. And you want to put them together on one board to save cost. But you still need the absolute highest performance. So you have to design the hypervisor a little bit differently. The same with multi-core. And embedded systems, very often, most of the time spent is doing one dedicated thing. If you have a switch, or a printer or something like that. It's one thing that you're running at a time. So to utilize the multi-core, you have to partition and run your programs a little bit different. So the interesting thing is that the same trends, the same hardware is coming from the IT space, coming down in the embedded space, but they're utilized very, very differently. And there are more things like uptime and isolation that becomes important. So people ask me, what's the difference between developing for multi-core versus a single core? And uh, there are actually quite a few differences. I remember the first time I did, personally, back in the 80s, on a multi-CPU system, uh, I went ahead thinking, it's about doing the same thing, yeah, more stuff is running at the same time, but how different can it be? Well, I think everyone who's starting to work on multiple cores with real concurrency at the same time, they figure out pretty soon that life is very different. And why is it different? Well, here, even if you have a multitasking, multi-threading operating system, you still only have one thing running at the same time. And typically when you develop programs for this, you tend to put all the important stuff into one thread that's doing something at, at any particular point. When you go to a system like this, the whole idea is that you need to keep these cores busy at all times, which means that you have to have parallel programs, parallel threads, running all the time. And with that, you get a lot of, of uh, problems that has to do with timing, race conditions, deadlocks, and so on. And these are very, very hard to debug. So while you're in the, this kind of system, one CPU, one operating system, printf debugging, a simple debugger can work really well. In this system, to find these kind of race conditions, you need to have different kinds of tools. You need to have operating systems and tools that really work closely together. So for example, if you set the breakpoint on this core over here, then perhaps you want to stop the whole system at the same time. You have to have advanced tools for that. So to be able to work in this environment, you need to have the operating systems that are optimized for this environment. You need to have middleware like crypto and offloading and so on that's really optimized for this. And you need to have tools that can analyze and find your concurrency problems. So it's a real big difference developing for this kind of system. And then you go to multiple cores, hypervisors, multiple operating systems, all running at the same time.